به سبحانه وتعالى وبع رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما صلاة تفتح لنا ابواب الردى وتيسير وتغلق بها ابواب الشر وتاسير انت مولانا فنعم مولى ونعم نصير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى has allowed us once more to reach a new islamic year so happy new year saal gera in naye saal mubarak ho aap sabko because when it's the gregorian new year everybody celebrates it everyone congratulates each other even our elders they say you know uh, merry new year you know they come out with all these kind of things but when it comes to the islamic new year most people don't even know that we've entered the new islamic year so whenever you hear that the moon of muharram has been seen then know that this means the new year of islam has started and we are currently in 1446 after hijri so that is 1446 years after the migration of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to medina now in this month there are many virtues there are many days which we can speak about there's many events that we could speak about but one of the most important days in this month are the 10th of muharram the 10th day of muharram ye yawm e ashura kehlata hai sabse afdal din yahi din hai aur iske bare mein guftugu karna bahut hi zaruri hai kyunki muharram mein aisa hota hai ke hamare sunni ulama bhi aisa karte hain ke muharram shuru ho gaya hai ke hum ab sirf karbala ke waqe ke bare mein guftugu karenge that they say we are only going to speak about the events that took place at the uh, oppression at karbala but that is not the way of the ahl sunnati wal jama ye sunniyon ka rawaj nahi hai ye rawafida ka rawaj hai aur jaisa wo karte hain wo kar le this is the way of the shia and if they want to do this then they can do this this got nothing to do with us but we should not be those people who are following them so how do we differentiate ourselves we do not become those people who make what we call matam in these days especially the first 10 days of muharram hum matam nahi banate ye unka rawaj hai wo karte hain unko karne do aap kyu unka unki nakal kar rahe ho why are you following them this is not for us to do for us we commemorate karbala all year round how we commemorate sayyidina hussein at the ahlul bait all year round how hum unko kaise yaad karte hain we implement this sunnah and what they died for what they stood for every single day of our lives every single day in the year we make sure we act according to the actions of sayyidina imam hussein radiyallahu an or alayhi salam whichever one you want to go with so when this is taking place how do you act like him he was somebody who stood up for justice he was somebody who did not compromise for mere worldly gain wo zulm ke khilaf khade hue the aur wo duniyadari ke liye nahi khade hue agar duniyadari ke liye wo khade hote to wo shaheed nahi hote if he stood for dunya he would have compromised the belief he would have compromised the deen and this is what we must remember when you see what's happening in gaza when you see what's happening in sudan when you see what's happening with the uyghurs when you see what's happening in kashmir when you see what's happening in syria when you see all of this oppression taking place you need to be hussein every single day you need to be the ahlul bayt every single day you do not just be husseini for the first 10 days of muharram and say yes we are fulfilling the right of the ahlul bayt no you are not if you are prating about for all of the year 350 days because in the islamic in the islamic year is 360 days not 365 365 is solar 360 is according to the moon and that's what we follow so 350 days of the year you do whatever you want to do You don't pray salah. You go out partying. You go out drinking. <clears throat> you go out doing everything that you can under the sun, which contradicts the religion. But then, when the days of Ashura come, when the days of 
Muharram come, the first 10 days in particularly, now you become somebody who's holy and you say, I am fulfilling the rights of the Ahlul Bayt. This is against the Ahlul Bayt. If you want to be lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt se muhabbat karna hai, to pure saal Ahlul Bayt se muhabbat karo. Ye nahi ke sirf o sirf in das dino ke liye muhabbat karo Ahlul Bayt ko. So, Abu Bakr relates in the hadith which is muttafaqun alay. Time has completed its cycle to the state of the day when Allah created the heavens and the earth. The year contains 12 months. In Islam, the year is 12 months as well. Of which four are sacred. To Islam may be bara mahine hai. Or un mein se char hurmat wale mahine hai. Which ones are these? Three of them are consecutive. Teen in mein se agathe aate hai. These are Vulqa'da, Vulhijja and Muharram. And the reason, one of the wisdoms for this is because the month of Vilhija is when the Hajj takes place. And in the sacred months, ye hurmat wale mahino mein qatl karna haram hai. In mein jang nahi kar sakte, koi bhi zulm wagaira, wo nahi kar sakte the. So this is why they all together. So in the month of Dhul Qa'da, people can travel safely to Makkah in the pre-Islamic times. And then they can perform the Hajj and stay there. And then easily they can leave in the month of Muharram, they have the whole month of Muharram to return back to their homes without fearing any oppression. So this was one of the wisdoms. And then you have one which comes on its own in between Jamaad Thani and Sha'ban, which is the month of Rajab, right? And this is the sacred month as well, which is believed to be the month in which on the 27th that the Isra wal Mi'raj took place of the Rasul Salawatu Rabbi Wasalam and Alayh. In the collection of Bukhari and An Nasai, Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, and a lot of these hadith are from Ibn Abbas radiallahu an with regards to Ashura and these days. Because why? It's important because he is from, uh, he is the nephew of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Al Abbas. So these are Ahlul Bayt that we are referring to. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he said, in the time of Jahiliyyah. The Arabs used to think that performing Umrah during the months of Hajj was one of the most evil acts on earth. So what they used to do also was they used to call Muharram Safar. So Safar is the second month. Muharram means the first month. So they would call Muharram Safar and they used to mess about with the dates and the time. So when you look at the Hajj that used to be taking place, it never used to take place according to the correct sighting and stuff. Right? What does that remind you of? But it's only when Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq an, when he went to perform the Hajj, when he was ordered by the Prophet Wasallam in the ninth year after Hijri to go and perform the Hajj, that is when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reset the dates of Hajj. So he performed Hajj on the actual days of Hajj. So the 8th of Dhul Hijjah was the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. But these people, they used to mess around with it back and forth. Now some of the virtues of Muharram. In the collection of Imam Muslim, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he relates that the most excellent fast after Ramadan is God's month, Al-Muharram. Ke sabse afdal roza Allah ke mehine mein hai, yani ke Ramadan ke baad, al muharram al haram mein. Sabse after roza isi mehine mein hai. So if you want to increase in good deed, if you want to fast and you think, I can't fast all year round, I can fast Ramadan and I want to do some good deeds extra, so which month can I prioritize? This is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the month of Muharram and this is the month that you should try to increase with your fasting if you are able. And the most excellent prayer after the prescribed prayers, after the Fad prayers, is your Tahajjat. To sabse afdal namaz, Fard namaz ke baad, Tahajjat ki namaz hai. So people who want to increase in rewards, in excellent good deeds, this is how you do it. You wake up for your Tahajjat. You pray your Tahajjat Salah. Tahajjat is where the good deeds are. Tahajjat is where the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So when people are fast asleep, set your alarm approximately half an hour before Fajr enters. Wake up, do your voodoo, 
and go and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put out your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for his mercy, ask him for his forgiveness, and most importantly, ask him for his pardon. What's the difference between the forgiveness and the pardon? Forgiveness is somebody may do something and you say, okay, I've forgiven you, right? But later on, they may do the same thing again. And then you say, remember you did this last time as well. Do you get the difference? And you bring it up. But the pardon is that you are pardoned completely. So if you were ever to do it again, it's not going to be raised up against you. If you say to your parents, you know, I'm never going to go to an illegal place ever again. Right? And then you say a few years later, yeah, yeah, I'm a really good son. And the parents say, yeah, you may be a good son, but remember that time that you did this, but you forgave me. You didn't grant me or anything. Yeah, but you still did it. And I'm reminding you that you still did it. So you can slip up. But if they completely pardon you, in a few years time you say, do you think I'm a good son? They'll say, yeah, you're a good son. You have done some bad things in the past, but that's gone. We don't hold you to account for that. So when you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask him for his afu. This is the dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fuwanna. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner. You love to pardon, so pardon me. This is the dua. This is what we do in Ramadan. And this shouldn't just be for Ramadan. You should be doing this all throughout the year. The fast of Muharram. In Tirmidhi and Ahmad and Nu'man ibn Sa'ad from Sayyidina Ali. Sayyidina Ali says that I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa about fasting in the month of Al-Muharram al-Haram. O oh, Messenger of Allah, which month do you order me to fast after the month of Ramadan? کہ کون سا مہینہ ہے رمضان کے بعد جس میں آپ مجھے حکم دیتے ہو روزہ رکھنے کا the Rasul صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said if you will fast after the month of Ramadan رمضان کے بعد اگر آپ کوئی بھی مہینے میں روزہ رکھو گے تو روزہ رکھو المحرم الحرام میں it is the month of محرم for indeed it is Allah's month بے شک یہ اللہ کا مہینہ ہے in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the repentance of a people. A qawm ki Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne maghfirat farmai. He forgave them. Or dusre logo koi bhi Allah tabarak wa ta'ala maaf farmata hai. And he forgives other people as well. He accepts their repentance as well. So this is the month when you want to be forgiven for your bad deeds. This is the month to do it in. Do not let this month go past without receiving the pardon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the first of Ashura. What is Ashura first and foremost? Ashura is the name for the 10th of Muharram. The 10th day of Muharram. Today we are in the 6th of Muharram. We started the first day was on Sunday and the first night was on Saturday night just gone. So the first of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram will be on Tuesday. Right? Just remember that. Those of you who are watching this later, we are in 2024. So don't do your own uh, working out later on if you're watching the recording. Someone did this once. They said, you said it was on Tuesday. I said, when? They said, you said it in this video. I said, brother, that was two years ago. <laughs> so they missed the fast. I said, inshallah, you'll still get rewarded for your intention. So Tuesday is the fast that you want for Ashura. That is the blessed day as well. Hakam ibn al-A'raj. In the collection of Imam Muslim, he says, I went to Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas ke paas gaya. Aur wo aram the kuwe zam zam ke paas. I said to him, tell me about fasting on Ashura. Ashura ke roze ke baare mein mujhe bata. He said, when you see the new moon of Muharram, then count the days until the, the ninth and then fast the tenth. I said to him, is it how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu observed the fast? He said, yes. That this is Allah's Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And the fast of Ashura used to be obligatory. Now we have a choice. But in the beginning stages, it used to be obligatory. See that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in the collection of Imam Bukhari, she relates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that the Quraysh used to fast on Ashura. Ke Quraysh bhi Ashura ka roza rakhte te, Islam se pehle. And the Quraysh in Islam, when the religion came, 
they and the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba, they were ordered to fast the fast of Ashura as well. It was, an, it was an obligation. But when the fasting for the month of Ramadan came forth, then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Whoever wishes to fast on the day of Ashura may do so, and whoever wishes to leave it can do so. Jab Ramadan ka mahina ke roze fard huwe, phir sahaba ikram ka ikhtiyar ho gaya. Ke chaho aap rakho roza, agar nahi rakhna to mat rakho. And it is on this day as well that they used to change the, the cloth, the kiswa of the Kaaba. It used to be on the 10th of Muharram. Now they've changed it. They've changed it from the days of Dhul Hijjah and they're doing it on the 1st of Muharram to coincide with the new year. And so I, I watched one of the videos when they were doing it and there was a comment which stuck out to me where somebody said that why have they changed it? And somebody said Sayyidina Umar set the Hijri calendar from when the Prophet وسلم, migrated from Makkah to Medina. And because of this Muharram, that became the beginning of the new year. And this is why they've coincided it with the beginning of the new year. Now this person that was replying back to this person, he was from a group called the Shia. And he turned around and said, well, who is Umar? How, who is he to decide when the new year is to be set out? When is the beginning of the new year to be set out? And it just made me chuckle because had this person read the history, he would have come to the realization that this is the first year of the year of Ali se aya tha. So he's complaining, saying, you know, who is Umar and who is he to do this? Because obviously they have issues with Sayyidina Umar and they believe that everything should be with Sayyidina Ali. This is when you get into extremes of loving the Ahlul Bayt. We love the Ahlul Bayt. The Ahlul Bayt are the crowns of our head. But we have limits. We love the Sahaba and we love the Ahlul Bayt. We don't go into a tug of war of who is better and who is superior and who is, you know, it's not a game of tech in or Mortal Kombat, who's going to win. That's not how the deen is. But had this person read a bit of history, they would have come to the realization that it was Sayyidina Ali's idea to start it from the point Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa migrated from Makkah to Medina. But unfortunately, people don't read. And for people who don't read, there are videos on YouTube, you know, Straight Talk Islam, Go and just look at the various playlists. It's all in there. In the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, in the life of Sayyidina Umar, you know, the events of um, Karbala and uh, the battle of Sifin, the battle of the Kamur. All of this has been already set out. So nobody, because when we were growing up, we all were in this fallacy where people said to us, yeah, your ulama are scared to speak about these events because it would back up our point. No, 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 nobody's scared. Our ulama just stayed away from these topics because they did not want to spread fitna. But in the time where fitna has already spread, now the ulama have a duty to start clearing the misconceptions. If they don't clear the misconceptions, then people will leave what they are supposed to be following. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, and it's important when we have hadith from Sayyidina Ibn Abbas because there are people who claim, again from this group, they say that the fasting of Ashura is a celebration and it was brought about by the Umayyads and it was brought about by Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas is not from the Umayyads, he's from the Ahlul Bayt. You know, he's the one who's relating these hadith. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, he mentions that when the Prophet wasallam came to Medina, he found that the Jews were fasting on the day of Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram. They used to say this is a great day in which Allah saved Musa alayhi salam and drowned the people of Fir'aun. And they said that Musa alayhi salam observed the fast on that day to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam ne is din pe roza rakha kyunke is din Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam aur badi Israel ko Fir'aun se nijat mili. تو وہ شکر ادا کرنے کے لیے سیدنا موسیٰ علیہ السلام دس محرم کو روزہ رکھتے تھے but the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم was fasting way before this even before the migration even before the order for fasting came the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم was fasting so when the orientalists say oh the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم copied the ahlul kitab he copied the jews and the christians again this is a falsehood 
Because we know from the Sahih Hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu and the Quraysh were already fasting this day. It was a regular action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Upon this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, I am closer to Musa than they are. Ke mera ziyada haq hai, musulmano ka ziyada haq hai, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam ke upar. So he observed the fast and he ordered the Muslims to fast on that day. And this was a day that was honored by the Jews and the Christians, not just the Jews. Sayyidina Abu Huraira in the collection of Imam Ahmad mentions that this is also the day that the ark of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam docked on Mount Judai. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam fasted out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam ki safina wo aake pahar judai pe aake ruki selab ke baad. Or unho ne bhi Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam ne bhi roza rakha al shukr ada karne ke liye Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ka. In the collection of Imam Muslim, we see that in the Jews treat this day as a day of Eid. And they would give ornaments and dresses to their women to wear and dress up for the day. Then the Prophet ﷺ orders to do something important. And this is important for our time in every single thing that we do in our life. Again from Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, collection of Abu Dawood and Imam Muslim. When the Prophet ﷺ commanded the companions to fast the 10th of, Ashu- 10th of Muharram, the day of Ashura, they said, Ya Rasulullah, this is a day which is considered great by the Jews and the Christians. This is their day. They are making a day of Is it not going to cause some confusion that people may not say that we are copying them? Because fast forward 1445 odd years, you come to the realization that the Orientalists are trying to say that. Uh, this is the insight from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in that case, when the next year comes, we shall fast on the 9th of Muharram and the 10th of Muharram. But it so happened to be that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left his physical abode in the very next year. So how do you fast? If you can, you should fast the 9th and the 10th. So it's Monday and Tuesday in 2024, 1446. Or you fast Tuesday and Wednesday, which is the 10th and the 11th. It is the lesser dislike, if you only fast the Tuesday, which is the 10th of Muharram. But if you cannot do two, and I mean if you really can't do two, because you should always aim for the higher. Don't always look for the low standards. If you look for low standards, you're going to stay low. Always aim higher. So if you can fast the two days, then please fast the two days. The rewards are immense. If you cannot, then at least fast the Tuesday. Come as come ek roza to rakho. Chukye ye makru tanzi me aata hai ke agar koi ek roza rakhega das muharram ka ye haram nahi hai. Makru e tahri me nahi aata. Lekin ye makru e tanzi hai. Ke afdal yehi hai ke aap dono din ka roza rakho. Don't imitate the Ahlul Kitab. And that's what you get from this, this message as well. From the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in another hadith, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you will follow those that came before you inch by inch, step by step. So that if they enter into the hole of a lizard, you would also follow them into that hole. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, do you mean the Ahlul Kitab by this? And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who else? So don't follow the people, the non-Muslims. You are not here to follow the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims are to follow you. And you are supposed to be following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how it's supposed to be. Don't feel inferior in yourself and say, you know, we need to start following this guy, we need to follow, start following that guy. No, you only follow one person and that is the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you follow the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are only going to end up at one place and that place is at the doors of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You will, you will not end up anywhere else. But if you follow other people, Certainly you will end up at other places which are not proper for the Muslims. Now why is it so important to fast on the day of the 10th of Muharram? 
Abu Qatada relates in the collection of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about fasting the day of Arafah, the day of Arafah, the ninth of the Hijjah. Ninth of the Hijjah, Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa ne farmaya, agar koi shaks no yome arafat ka roza rakhega, to do sal ke magfirat ka ajar usko milega. Pichle sal or agle sal. Lekin agar wo yome ashura ka roza rakhega, to pichle pude sal ke guna uske mafonge. So if you fast the day of the ninth of the Hijjah, you get forgiveness of two years of sins, the previous year and the coming year. These are minor sins, by the way. For, gra- for grave sins, you have to either perform a sincere hajj or a sincere repentance. And then he was asked about the 10th of Muharram, about this fast, the day of Ashura. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the one who fasts the 10th of Muharram, he will be forgiven all of the sins from his previous year. Again, minor sins. So make sure Tuesday is a great fa- uh, fast and great rewards. Now, quickly I want to touch upon something. Wailing and depression over Karbala during these 10 days is haram. It is haram. Matam banana in das dino mein haram hai. Ye hamari aur Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki sunnat mein se hai hi nahi. Ye hamara rewaj nahi hai. Ye dousro ka rewaj hai. Ye unka manhaj hai. Agar wo karte hai, unko karne do. If other people want to do it, let them do it. But for us, the rulings are clear. In the collection of Imam Buhari, the woman, the person is to mourn for three days and three nights, except for the woman who is mourning for her husband, that she is allowed to mourn for four months. That is her idda. Or if he or her husband passes away, um, then, sorry, if her husband passes away, then it's four months and ten days. That she is allowed to mourn for. But for everybody else, it's three days and three nights. You can be sad. You can remember certain things. But to do matam, it is impermissible. Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She passed away in the month of Ramadan. Because people say you're not allowed to get married in the month of Muharram. They say that if you get married or you get invitation of marriage, this is haram. Hai. Where are you getting this from? Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, the most beloved to the Prophet وسلم, his first wife, she passed away in the month of Ramadan. But the Prophet وسلم, in Ramadan, the third year after Hijri, he married Sayyidah Zainab bint Khuzayma. Sayyidina Hamza, the beloved uncle of the Prophet wasallam, the defender of the religion, he was martyred at Uhud in Shawal, third after Hijri. He was martyred, was shaheed huwe, third after Hijri, Shawal ke mehine mein. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unho ne naqa kiya Sayyidah Umm Salama ke saad. He married Sayyidah Umm Salama in Shawal the very next year. So if it was haram to get married when your loved ones are passing away, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would not have got married in these days. Are you saying you are more, you love the Ahlul Bayt more than the Prophet وسلم? Are you saying you have more understanding of the religion than the Prophet وسلم? In the collection of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, wailing, zor zor se chikna chilana, ye kufr ki nishani hai. This is the sign of the disbelievers. It doesn't make you a kafir, but it is a sign of the disbelievers. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, said, He who slaps his cheeks, tears his clothes, and wails, laments loudly. The wailing of ignorance is not from us. This is not from us. In the collection of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, if a woman, and this extends to the men as well, because nowadays the men, they do the wailing now. If a woman does not repent from wailing, lamenting, chikna chilana, then on the day of resurrection, she will be wearing a garment of hot tar. And she will be wearing a garment of, which is covered in infectious scabs. This is the great warning, a grave warning against this. So we need to be very, very careful. Other things that you can mention in the month of Muharram, because if you don't want to get married in the month of Muharram, 
you consider it haram don't get married in any of the months phir pure saal mein nikah mat karo pure saal mein ye haram ho jata hai why in the month of muharram sayyidina imam husain ibn ali and ahlul bayt were shaheed so they say don't do nikah in this month but what about the other months in safar sayyidina hasan ibn ali was martyred what about that sayyidina hasan ibn ali sayyidina husain ke bhai wo shaheed hue to safar ke bare mein kyun nahi kehte why are you not saying it about that in the rabi'ul awwal the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was shaheed from the slow acting poison he passed away from the physical abode us ba us mahine mein kyun shaadi karte ho in the month of rabi' athani sayyidina sheikh abdul qadir jilani passed away who is hasani and husaini sayyid why are you doing shaadi in this month jamadul awwal sayyida zainab bint haritha and sayyidina jafar ibn tayyar sayyidina jafar at tayyar he was martyred in this month why are you get married in this month in the six uh, the six one six month jamad athani sayyida fatima bint muhammad passed away and for us sayyidina abu bakr siddiq passed away in rajab sayyidina umar ibn Ad- abdul aziz passed away in shaaban ummul mu'minin sayyida hafsa and imam al azam abu hanifa passed away in the month of ramadan sayyidina sayyidatina khadija bint khuwailid and sayyidina ali ibn abi talib was shaheed in the month of ramadan why are you get married in the month of ramadan in shawal sayyidina hamza ibn abdul muttalib passed away was shaheed why you get married in the month of shawal in zul qa'da sayyidina qab ibn zaid and zul hijja this is for azna sayyidina uthman ibn affan and sayyidina umar ibn khattab were both shaheed in this month so why you get married in this month please don't fall for these things which are not from our religion and closing finally on this point in mishkatul musabi in shu'bul iman lil bayhaqi it is recorded if anyone gives liberally to his family on the day of ashura if you give to your family spend on your family on the day of ashura which is tuesday allah will be liberal to him for the rest of the year Allah will give you plenty for the rest of the year. You spend it on your family and Allah is giving you more. Think about it. Sayyidina Sufyan ibn Uyayna in Lata'if al-Ma'arif, he said, I practiced this amal for 50 or 60 years and I found nothing but good in it. So on Tuesday, this is what you do. Number one, you fast. Number two, spend on your family. If you've got children, give them presents. take them to the park you know get them some ice cream for your wife bring her some food already cooked don't go to the shop i mention this every year cuz has to be mentioned sofian's going to go to the butchers he's going to get some meat he's going to bring it home la budi meri le bana look what i bought for you no that's not that's not doing something good for them do something good spend on them give charity do good deeds on this day it is a blessed day and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to make the most of this month and this day wa ma alayna illa bilaghum mubin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ali wa sahbihi wa sallam